Welcome to Tips for the Transition, where we have deep, meaningful conversations about life. We talk about how significant changes like divorce, grief, and career change can affect us, our family, our relationships, and our work, and how to move beyond them. I'm your host, Maria Tomas Keegan, Certified Career and Life Coach for Women, and I'm here to support you through the messy seasons of life so you can answer big questions like, who am I now and how do I move on from here? If you're ready to consider new options, be inspired and meet incredible women who are on this life journey with us, you're in the right place. You'll find something in each episode to give you hope and encourage you to move from panic to powerful, from rocky to resilient, and from upside down to right side up. This is Tips for the Transition. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to this week's podcast. I'm Maria Tomas Keegan, your host. And as a career coach, I help professional women who feel stuck. Together, we position them for the career they really want to feel fulfilled and create more harmony in their lives. Because when your career is a soulful fit, it won't become a soul-sucking experience. So each week, I invite inspiring guests to be a resource for you and help you make the moves you want to make. So if something strikes a chord as you listen in, be sure to check the show notes below for all the links you'll need to reach my guest or me. Well, let me ask you a question. I often start my podcasts with a question for you. Have you ever experienced a career crisis? It's more than hitting the snooze button, dragging yourself out of bed every morning. It's more like if you had to endure one more day at this job, it might you might lose your grip entirely. You're on the edge of burnout or maybe a breakdown. And it's serious and it shouldn't be ignored. So we're going to talk about having a career crisis today and what to do about it with Angela Wilson. She comes to us from Melbourne, Australia and is considered one of the brightest minds in career transition coaching and mentoring. She's a number one best-selling author, well-respected speaker, educator, and consultant on all things careers and transitions. We are kindred spirits with similar passions to help professional women. Angela is the founder of Career Design Studio, a global transitional journey for women who have experienced an unexpected change in their career. She helps to clean up the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual mess women can find themselves in after the chaos of a career crisis. So we call this episode, Career Crisis Averted. Welcome, Angela. Thank you so much for joining us so early in the morning in Australia. Thanks for having me, Maria. It's as I was mentioning to you before, it's nice and quiet in my house. So it's a perfect time for me to be joining live and talking about career crisis averted. Well, that's great. I, I am so appreciative that you are got up so early to be with us today, but that you are sharing your expertise with us. So let's get started. I'd like to pull the curtain back a little bit and establish some context around this subject of career crisis. Would you share your story about an unexpected change for you? Sure, and this is where I feel like my life really began. When I think back to September 2016, it was a normal kind of day. I live up in the mountains in Melbourne and there was a fierce windstorm that swept through, which was very unusual. It came from a different direction. And for me, when I went outside and saw the trees, there we have really tall gum trees outside at our property. They were thrashing backwards and forwards. 
the wind was howling in a very uh, surreal kind of way, I realised that it was one of those moments that a natural disaster was was coming through our property and that in those moments you go into survival mode, you go into what do we do, do we stay, do we go. We'd had a couple of uh, bushfires close by so we we sort of kicked into that kind of mentality and as we were deciding do we stay and do we go, a shadow out of the corner of our eye, we were standing in our lounge room, it gave us that instinct of we need to get out of our house instantly and as we ran outside we had kids i grabbed one and popped one on my hip and we all witnessed a one of those big gum trees uprooting and landing and crushing our home and to see that to hear the cries of the children to know that our cars were also trapped it was one of those life-changing moments where everything in an instant had changed and staring at the devastation was one of those moments I'll never forget. And when I think about what happened within me, there was that the narrowing of whatever else was on my mind. It really cleared in that moment and life became about my family and the rebuild of our home. And it did put everything else on hold. And for three years we worked through the trauma of the natural disaster. I also battled insurance and counsel through that to, to rebuild that on that beautiful property that we had. And when I think about that change, it was one of those uh, moments that still live with me today that I, I wanted to really become uh, instantly, I just knew that I was a different person and, and it, started to shift something within me yet it wasn't until the dust kind of settled when I think about trying to go back to normal life so with with the three years we finally got to rebuild and I was forced back into a job within those last couple of months that I wouldn't have picked if I if I was in a different position yet because my focus was on my family and my rebuild of my home. I did that because that was my goal to be able to rebuild and move back in. And so I was in this job. We had rebuilt, so we did get uh, that satisfaction of rebuilding on our property. And as I mentioned, the dust began to settle and I was still in that job that I hadn't possibly chosen if it, I, if it was under different circumstances. And I found that I, on the outside, everything looked great. We had our home. It was a fresh start, no longer with council, no longer rebuilding. And so I took on that fresh start with a, a new outlook. Yet within a week of coming back into that job, with that outlook, I was shown loud and clear that that particular job was not for me. And it started to once again sort of bring up things that I had not had the chance to really look into because my focus had been about uh, our home and our family. And I started to notice a few changes within myself which were stirring uh, certain emotions and thoughts and feelings and that's when I found myself in a career crisis. I was in a job that I knew I didn't want to be in, yet who was I after this big change, this unexpected change that had come through my life? I knew how precious life was and where did I want to go? Who did I want to be now that I'd been through that that moment that that is going to live with me forever. Wow, that was that's a compelling story that would change anybody's outlook on life, and it it sets a new perspective, doesn't it? When For sure. You realize how close you all came to a different outcome, and thankfully you were all moved to get out when you did and and that uh, and that you were all safe and that it was you know a rebuild of material things 
but your family was safe. Yes. That kind of, I can understand how that kind of event could change your perspective about almost anything you think about. For sure. Yeah. Yes. And it was when I went from survival mode. So survival mode, I feel, was a part of that first three years to thriving when I when we'd rebuilt I thought this is my chance I'm gonna start fresh and we're gonna thrive and that's when I went oh hold on a minute <laughs> there's something still not right and it yes it was a lot about so I yeah I I totally um yeah. get what you were saying yeah yeah so what impact did the career crisis have on you and what what kind of impact might might others see in a career crisis in a career crisis it's not it's no longer about the situation that you were in so i think of my ending as that moment that the tree landed on on my house and that i was in between that new beginning. So I thought that the new beginning was the rebuild of the home, yet internally it was more about who am I now after everything that I've been through. So the career crisis is an internal process and it is about wanting to move into that new beginning and move on from the event or the situation that you've been in. And for me, the crisis that I was facing was it was professional and so some people might find that uh even the event my event was personal but my crisis became about um, my career so there's all different levels of and different events that can happen that can still stir something within you and it's when we don't have those tools coping strategies and that sense of self that that's where that biggest impact can come from so when i think about career crisis and what what other impacts that has internally on us i can re remember distinctively those feelings of being lost and stuck and they are the words that i often hear people saying and they they prick my ears up and I often think, oh, they're using those particular words that I remember feeling on that that internal journey, using the words, I don't know, because there's lots of overwhelm that you're facing, that there's lots of thinking happening. And when we are feeling lost and stuck and the, you're in that place of I don't know, it's very hard to make decisions. So it's almost like that overwhelm builds up and that when that overwhelm builds up, we can start to maybe lose our confidence about, because we can't make decisions, we're not sure how to move on, what's the right path forward. It can become really hard when we are living in that place of I don't know. The impact then can build and it can turn into burnout, it can turn into those low feelings may be leading to depression, which we want to be able to catch early. We want to be able to find us hearing those words that we're saying and maybe we're constantly telling people about our story and our situation and they also start noticing that, oh, is everything okay? Because you're you're coming back to that same part that other people notice that you're stuck as well and it can interfere in relationships. There's so many areas that this career crisis can begin to impact your life. And when we think about compounding, we don't want to stay in that for too long because that's when we become the unhappiest person at work, the one that no one wants to sit with um, to have lunch because of the, the potential down um, downers that you're talking about. So we want to really make sure that we catch that. And that's why I like to be able to give uh, tips and advice and strategies and tools to people who are going through that so that they can move through to that new beginning that they're all trying to find. Right. You know, it, it's so interesting to me. Um, and I, 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 
I talk about this with my clients all the time, how interconnected we all are, right? We are very complex people and we have multiple uh, aspects of our lives that we focus on. So it might be the career uh, and what, what happens in our career affects other aspects of our lives. It might be a personal event, a personal big change, like at what happened to you. And that caused you to re-evaluate everything else in your life, including your career. And then it, it could be, a, you know, another area of your life. It could be your health. Something happens to your health. And that causes you to reevaluate how you see everything else in your life. So we don't we don't get to uh, compartmentalize each area of our life and expect that nothing else gets impacted because everything gets impacted, especially when you start asking yourself big questions like the ones you faced, like who am I now? that all of this has changed for me and what do I really want? And it is about that, the, the bigger questions that you begin to ask, which can sometimes be really scary that yeah. some people avoid it. Some people put that part off and we often feel like our whole life is in a big mess. And that's where I, I come in and uh, I, in the intro you were talking about that i clean up that that mess because it does affect every part of our lives it's mental physical emotional spiritual it taps into our relationships the playfulness into our careers and into that sense of ourselves that it is about beginning to ask those big questions and be okay with the unknown because sometimes it's that uncertainty that also stirs the the i don't know because sometimes that new beginning might not be clear just yet and that can really yeah. begin to stir things in people that that don't like that certainty you know i call it that 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 place between no longer and not yet yes right something has changed it isn't the way it used to be and we're caught in this middle this mid part of a transition where we don't know what's coming next so it's that it's not yet right we don't know what that mm -hmm. is yet and it, it's a it can be a very scary place to be so we talk about obstacles a lot on this podcast so i'd love to hear your thoughts on what usually holds us back from having an inspiring career, designing that, maybe redesigning that after a dramatic change. What can stop us? And I instinctively go to what we all think, which are our obstacles, uh, that external person, place, thing, money, time. And we can begin to use those kinds of words and Obstacles, blocks, barriers, they're actually within. So they're within us. It's us stopping ourselves from that inspiring career. And to think about the different ways that those obstacles and the shapes and the sizes that they come in, we've got our inner critic that can sometimes take over when we have that internal wisdom and that inner coach that knows what we want to be doing, where we need to be headed, that gut feeling, the inner critic can sometimes take over and become loud. And it can come in all different uh, uh, all different levels. Maybe you're a procrastinator, maybe you're a perfectionist, maybe you're a people pleaser, an overachiever. And there's lots of different ways that an inner critic can come out and voice their opinion and really feel like they stop us. Rather, we want that inner coach to be strengthened, the one that can help us through. Maybe it's limiting beliefs as well. They're the excuses and the lies that we tell ourselves that also can hinder our movement forward. So one, a couple that I often hear is that 
that I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I, I don't have the experience or I don't want to start again. Uh, time is also another big one. I don't have the time. And when we challenge those limiting beliefs, it's interesting for us to go, oh, that's not true. And what can I do about that? Let's reframe it and be able to look at things in a different perspective. Another big obstacle is fears as well. The fear of success, the, the fear of failure are the, the two biggest ones that I see that can really stop us because the fear is just that body response where we have the fight, the flight or our freeze and that understanding our fears is a big part of moving forward and doing things that scare us and stepping out of our comfort zone, which can be little steps at a time and big gains as well, that if we continue to move forward past those obstacles, looking at them in a different perspective, challenging them, it's amazing what we can do when we realise that those obstacles and the blocks are actually within us and we focus on ourselves, we focus on our self-care, we, we can even really boil all of this down to our self-management. So it's not about time management, not about priority management, it's about how we manage ourselves, our thoughts, our feelings, our actions, our behaviours and how, what do we do with ourselves through that moment? And it, it may seem, the, uh, the word selfish is coming up, that it may feel selfish as, as a woman myself, as a mother, how can I take that time to focus on my career and think about things when I've got the children and I've got so many other things to do, but it's, it's so important for a career crisis to focus on yourself, to make sure that you're okay through this and that you're managing yourself in the way that you need to be uh, working through a career crisis. Yeah, I, you know, I love the way you put that. I love the, that you, call, you called us all out uh, and those obstacles that we think about uh, that are often could be considered external are really not what's holding us back. It's how we think about them right? It's the importance we put on them. And, and we get to challenge all of that if we are doing ourselves the service of uh, re-evaluating what it is we are, what we're doing, how we are, how we're responding to things. Yeah, I love the way. So thanks for calling us out. <laughs> it was I think yeah. I covered every category. I think so. And and it's really it's a it's a good way for us to reframe how we think about obstacles instead of looking at the things that honestly we can't control, right? There's just so much time in a day. Everybody has the same 24 hours, the same number of minutes. Everybody does. We can't change that. Uh, but how we manage our own time, how the choices we get to make, that's what's important. And how we think uh, about where we're at, what we're doing, how we're re responding to those external forces. I love that. Okay. Yeah, and it, and just uh, one more thing that's coming up is that who do we want to become as well? We've got this middle part where we can dream and we can go for things that we had possibly put off for so many years. And this, I often find that an unexpected change or a big change gives us that fuel to go, I'm going to go after that now. I'm going to explore that. I'm going to look at that. And, yes, it is scary, yet that's it's calling me. It's something that I want to become it's something that I want to explore and now's the time. So I often find that it can give us that, that as I mentioned, that fuel to really go for something now. Why, and I often think, why not? Yeah, that's a great question. Why not? You know, if you're in the middle of something, right, that, that space between uh, 
no longer and not yet. Uh, there's a there's an there's an opportunity there, and there's a freedom there. So you're not tied to one or the other. You're you're kind of free to start exploring things that you might not otherwise explore. I love that. I, I love I love that we have that opportunity if we take it right because it's a, yes. it's a it's a great op it's a great chance for us to dream a new dream or grab on to an old dream that we haven't realized yet that's still really important to us. Mm. And love that. Okay, so clarity and confidence uh, about moving forward go hand in hand in navigating a career change, right? We got to be clear mm -hmm. and we got to we got to have some sense of confidence about what it is we want. So what advice do you give women about how to become clear about that next step in their career journey? And I can just remember back to that feeling of overwhelm when you're feeling lost and stuck and that everything does seem to be in the mind and how you're going to find a way forward. There's lots of questioning going on and how can you clear that? How can you become uh, a bit more focused on something, which that's what I often find that as soon as people begin to uncover their story and their situation and really investigate what's going on, it begins to start clearing a bit of that fog. I know that coaching conversations are an amazing tool that some people haven't tapped into as much. And I know that when I started seeing a coach, it is it is very, uh, what's the word? It's it's really a, a, a chance to get out what's in our mind. So the things that stay in the dark and get it out into the light, talking to a coach. I did yeah. lots of journaling through that time as well to get it out. Right. So that I could find that clarity. And so and so many of the, the opportunity of talking with somebody who asks really good questions, they are often questions we haven't thought about asking ourselves. And they they help us kind of look at things in a different light. I can remember so many times in when with my own coaches over the years. I, I can remember saying, I never thought about it that way. And that's so enlightening. And when you have that objective view of what's going on with you, you sometimes can hear a question that, that makes you stop and say, you know, I never thought about it that way. And now there's an opportunity to look at things differently. I love those aha moments that just by unraveling your thoughts, whether it is on paper, whether it is with a coach, yeah. uh, that it's amazing how much you go, ah, oh, there's that answer that I was looking for, which is a little clue. So I, I think of little breadcrumbs along the way that there's little yeah. clues that you can begin to identify just by having that different perspective. So getting things out of the dark and into the light is a way to have that new perspective. It begins to open up things. Mm -hmm. I can remember being very focused on family and home. And then when I stepped out into the big wide world, I was almost shocked going, wow, where is everything? And I was a bit disorientated about my career and where I was, where I was heading. And as soon as I began talking to a coach and opened up my eyes to opportunities that word keeps coming up today that there's so many opportunities there's options there's alternatives yeah. that once I had those aha moments and collected all those little clues along the way that's what led me to just to, to be able to uncover my next chapter and to discover finally once and for all the meaning and purpose of my life and it yeah. did take it's a process. It doesn't happen in uh, in one day. It's about no. yeah, opening up your perspective and looking for little clues that have always been there. We just need to be able to 
open up our perspective and our focus to find them. And having a guide to do that is always, I find it hugely beneficial because it is uh, an opportunity to, to, to see things differently and, and then consider that there are so many other options. I, I, I think that's so important to, to find the right guide so that you don't have to figure it out on your own You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You really can follow someone's process and trust that process that they'll guide you through, especially someone who's been there and done that, right? Exactly. Yeah. To have that person a couple of steps ahead can give you that that confidence and motivation and inspiration that if they can do it, then I can do it too. Yeah, exactly. Because we're not in this, nobody's in this alone. and nobody, nobody should have to go through tough times all by themselves. They just have to be brave enough to just ask for help and then look for, you know, people who are, like you say, you know, a few steps ahead of them and can guide them along the way. You know, I, I, uh, I know we both agree that knowing what's most important at this stage in uh, their lives, when people are going through this career crisis kind of feeling, this, this stage, uh, it, knowing what's the most important is truly foundational. So share with us your view uh, of the role that values play in career development and moving beyond a career crisis. And it is amazing when we when we find out about values. I'd always heard the word and once I understood that values are the blueprint for your happiness and they can open up meaning and purpose and be that guide within that it is that support that sometimes we can't sometimes articulate what might be going on inside of us. So when I think back to my career crisis, there was something stirring within. There was something misaligned and something didn't feel right. And I wasn't sure what that was until I began to explore my values on a professional level, but also a personal level. And knowing that values change with circumstances and over time, that what I valued even in the three years that life went on hold to what I valued now that we were sort of stepping out into the big uh, world again, that my values had shifted. And once I explored them in that, in both professionally and personally, it gave me my anchor it gave me my guide to that's why there's that off feeling within me that that I need to begin to ask questions from the focus of my values. So when I think about the job that I was in and my top value, both personally and professionally, it's flexibility and, and that freedom. And what I was finding was there was not a lot of flexibility and freedom in my role and what I was able to do. So once I began to explore, well, what does freedom look like for me? What would it feel like in a job? What would I be doing? It began to settle that part of me that was trying to stir and trying to get my attention that something wasn't right. And when we begin to explore our values and use them as that guide and and helping us make decisions, it gives us that sense of uh, inner confidence that is that going to bring me more freedom or more flexibility or if not, then that question that you come back to your values and ask in moments where you're going, oh, does that or doesn't that? Usually if it does, it means that it's a really easy decision. And if not, do I want to compromise my own values? Uh, So I often find that values are a really great uh, anchor and tool to guide us through a crisis. And if you haven't looked into your values, it is one thing that I would say, please do, because it, it is one, again, one of those, it's a major clue 
for where you need to be heading and what you need through that time to your new beginning. I could not agree with you more. I talk about this with my clients all the time as well. It is that uh, it is that anchor. It is the the the, the values. However, I, I recommend to my clients, you have no more than five at the top of your list. We live by lots of different values in multiple areas of our lives and they can be different. But generally speaking, there are five core values that without which we would not be able to operate. We would not be happy. Uh, and they are the, the kind of the checklist, right? Against which you can you can put put any decision or choice against your values and say, does it honor this one? Does it honor this one? Does it? And if it does, you can be really confident that you're making a good decision, at least for this moment, right? Given the information you have. And that's all we can do, right? Is make choices based on what we know today, what we value most today, and know that that may change. And you can change your mind if it does and be all okay with that. But your values are that that foundational piece. We so agree on that. I am so glad. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So all of this, none of this, and all of it doesn't happen automatically. So what do you suggest about the time, the effort that it takes uh, as we consider our next career move, what that path might look like, what the choices might be. What do you think about that? Yeah, and I often come back to that not many people might know or have ever really considered their career. They might not have spent the time exploring their values or looking into their strengths, their interests, because when we do spend that time, it's amazing how many aha moments we can get out of just even an hour exploring uh, any particular uh, one of those things that I've mentioned that to put time and effort into your career is really important. It's something that we often don't do. We might not have developed the skills we might not have learned about it at school we might not have read any books about career development and to gain that knowledge and that information about the tips and the tools and the strategies to move uh, into your new beginning in a career or to uncover what meaning and purpose uh, is for you in your life it does take little moments you're giving time to explore your career. And we've mentioned the support of doing that with a coach and doing that with someone who can guide you. And that brings out even more clarity and it brings out even more direction and helps you set up a plan so that you don't have to do it alone, that you can go and read every book out there about career development, but what part are you putting into action I was recently working with a client that hadn't worked for about seven years and they said that they spent seven years thinking about what they wanted to do and where they wanted to be. And within that seven years, their career crisis was very deeply embedded. And so to begin to work with someone where you got to spend time thinking about their career within three months that had turned around transformed and was a totally different person because they started taking action. They started doing things, talking to people, understanding the language of a new industry that they were moving into, that they were so scared. So they were really stuck in that fight uh, and um, flight mode. And it wasn't until they began to take action and explore their career and using a guide from someone who knows what they're doing, it was a, a very, it was a great, uh, as a coach, it was one of those moments where I was just in awe about how much they totally changed and transformed within a, a short amount of time because they spent time focusing on their career, carving out 
moments to explore their values and doing it little bit by little bit and talking about what interests them and where their strengths are and what they didn't like about their past employers or in or companies that they worked for or the commute and well, what do they want? So giving them a chance to get everything out, to sort through what wasn't working and what can be working now. And they often would say, I spent seven years just thinking, I would go to bed thinking, and now that I'm taking action, that's where that's where they saw the biggest growth and the biggest movement forward. And it, it was that ripple effect of, wow, I spoke to someone and then then they let me, they gave me someone else's number and I spoke to them and they just totally transformed into a confident person yeah. that now knows when I'm feeling a little, a little bit unsure about my career, these are the steps that I take. You keep repeating the, the strategies that, that we can guide them through. Yeah, and you know, in fact, it's not just learning tools that will help you reevaluate your career, but in, tr in fact, these are tools that will help you reevaluate anything in your life, right? And, and nothing happens until we, we do something different. And sitting back for seven years, that's a great story, uh, sitting back for seven years and, and thinking and wondering and wishing for things to be different, but not doing anything about it, not taking any, any positive steps in a forward direction. Uh, nothing happens until you start doing that. And that's a, that's a great example of why we all as coaches talk about, uh, you know, doing some soul searching is absolutely the first step, looking within and then deciding what it is, who you are now, who do you want to become and what do you want? And then, uh, and then putting plans in place to figure out how to make that happen and taking steps toward it. I love that. It's a great way to uh, wrap up the conversation part of today's podcast, but we're not done yet. I really want to hear, and we've covered a lot of your tips along the way, uh, but I would love for you to share with us some you know, practical tips and strategies. It's why we call the show Tips for the Transition. What are some of your tips for us today, Angela? Out, out of all the tips, there's so many different ones, but the, the, the most important ones come back to getting things out of the dark and into the light. So understanding your situation and yourself, grabbing a journal. If you don't have a coach on hand, uh, you've got that resource where you can get things out of your mind and onto the paper. I often set a timer for maybe five minutes or 10 minutes and do a quick, and it's called a mind dump where you get things out, but then you go back and you read what you've got in on the pages because that's where you'll find those aha moments and those little gems that can sometimes get lost within the swirl and the whirl of, of what's going on in our minds. So understanding yourself and your situation through journaling uh, is a great tip that is one that I often uh, refer to myself and pass on to clients. Yeah, it's, it's so important to get things out of our heads, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's where the clarity can begin and the fog yeah. can lift. And if, the, we stay, if we stay in our heads, we overthink things, we, we, we make mountains out of molehills, uh, and when we get it down on paper, we get to look at it and say, huh, that's not as bad as I thought it was, or, or that is pretty bad, but you know what? I can think of something now that I could do to change it. So it's again, it becoming the objective observer, right? When you get it out of yourself, then you get to read it more objectively. For sure. And that kind of leads into the next tip about getting a new perspective on things that to do that, there's, I mean, there's once again, so many little tips, but one way is to catch the thoughts that, that you might be thinking when we come back to those obstacles that might be holding you back, just noticing what you might be thinking and saying about your career or even the unknown of what might be uh, happening 
in the in the future we're not very good at predicting our future yet we can catch what's happening in that moment right. and writing those thoughts down and then challenging them is that true do i believe that and then reframing and flipping that into if you don't have enough time to research a new industry that you can uh, reframe that into I do have the time and then you'll set a time, a location and when you're actually going to uh, to explore that, pop it in your diary, put it in your phone as a reminder and spend. to Begin with two minutes exploring and then you'll be able to feel successful so looking at the things that are popping up in your mind, those thoughts and feelings about careers and moving into possibly a new chapter and reframing them. That's, That's another that. another way to get a new perspective on things. Yeah. Yep. It's so important. It is so important. All right. We have time for one more quick tip. Okay. Uh, get creative. I often think about how boring careers can be if you think it's just resumes and LinkedIn. There is so many other ways that you can explore careers. Put your curiosity hat on, uh, open up your eyes to those dreams that you might have uh, been thinking about. Look back at what you wanted to be when you were younger and explore what part of that's still alive in me now and co connect with that playful, fun side because careers aren't boring. We spend so much of our lives in our job that we want it to be fun. We want it to use that creative part of us that can often find answers that are beyond your wildest dreams even better than what you could have even thought about. So get creative. Yeah, I love that. I love that. It's not always easy for people to do, but it's almost always because they're stuck in this pattern uh, that they've been in for so long. And and the the three tips you gave us are a way to get out of the pattern, to change the pattern, and kind to uh, and and just look at it from uh, from a different perspective. I love that. Angela, thank you so much for being here, for getting up again, getting up so early in Australia. Uh, I really appreciate that you came and so generously shared about your story and how you related it back to uh, what happened to you and the career crisis you were faced with and how that evolved for you. So I want to thank you again for being here today. Thanks for having me. It's been great. What a great way to start the day. It, it, oh, good. I'm so glad. And and I would love to, for people to know how to reach you. So uh, we're going to put your website up here. Is that the best way? Yeah. So my website is www.careerdesignstudio.com.au. And that is a great tool, resource for all the ways that, that I can work with people, it's also got uh, links to a free discovery session if someone feels that something might be coming up that you want to carve out that time to explore your career. Uh, you can click in and book a session through that as well. And it's nice and bright and colourful and will get you all uh, excited about careers. Perfect. All right. And we want, we want our, our listening audience with our women who are stuck, feeling stuck, to get excited about possibility. So I love that you're that you're offering them that. That's great. Thank you again, Angela. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, oh, it is my pleasure. And for those who are watching and listening, I appreciate that you are a part of our community. So if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a comment or a review. And if there's a star rating where you're listening, just pick a star. We would love to get your feedback. And as I said at the top of the show, I love creating and sharing resources for professional women who feel stuck in their careers. So if something in this episode resonates with you and you'd like to get a fresh perspective on it, reach out, let's have a chat reach out to me, reach out to Angela, check the links in the show notes below uh, so that you can get to either one of us. Um, and I invite you to continue this conversation in my private Facebook group 
called the Career Transition Roadmap. So again, look for the link for that below. And let's meet again here, as always, on Wednesday next week. Because you know what? I believe it's our time to thrive. So let's thrive together. Till next time, I'm Maria Tomas Keegan, helping you turn transition into triumph.